We're live. We're live now. It's SoCal Honey Badger and Ryan Stone. Say hi to the people. Hi to the people. Right? There's actually kind of a lot to cover today, so let's just get right into it. Now, you had mentioned That's something. Good. You mentioned something about Brock Lesnar, so just repeat it again, and then we're going to go off. You know, it's the show that All right, so I don't know how true it is. I saw it as a meme, Nitro. and Tonight, it was saying how Brock had a tough conversation with Vince where sport. he hates when people cut promos or in front of the audience say that they're going to steal the show. And he hates it because it implies that professional wrestling is a performance. Um, yeah, I want to hear your take on this. Um, I think that I understand where he's coming from. He comes from the UFC and he comes from the NCAA. And he came up at the time when kayfabe was dead, but there were still people who lived by it. And so I get it. Yeah, man, saying it's a performance does, or saying, you know, I'm going to steal the show does kind of break kayfabe in a sense. But I feel like in the realm of, like, what it is that we're all about, wrestling, right? It's all about different people having something different to add to it. And so I think that, yeah, he can sit there and not like it, but, I mean, somebody having that personality does add to the show. You know, and there are people like that in the UFC, like Conor McGregor is basically says that, you know? But, but I'm, I'm willing to bet Conor doesn't, I mean, I know they get bonuses for like fight of the night, knockout of the night, submission of the night type stuff. But I'm willing to bet Conor would rather take a win than have a really good fight. Game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I see Brock's point. I see your point. I, I tend to agree more with Brock. And, and, and you know, and, and yes, I know. I'm saying that on a guys, podcast a that we call Play Fight. I understand the irony. Well, here's my counter to that. Is that, dude, that was fucking Shawn Michaels' thing. And nobody ever thought that Shawn Michaels wasn't trying to compete. Yeah. And so that would be my counter to it is like, dude, like you're gonna tell me that like one like one of the greatest of all times whole stick the showstopper, right? Like you're telling me that like that doesn't work and that it makes wrestling fake? Like I I, I beg I beg to differ because nobody <laughs> nobody thought like Shawn Michaels made things seem fake. You know, nobody thought Ric Flair made seem, things seem fake. No. But, but here's the thing. Here, here's where I side with Brock. Like, and, and this is where maybe I, I just didn't really think too much into Shawn Michaels saying, you know, the showstopper. I'm, you know, I'm always going to have, you know, Mr. WrestleMania has the best match on WrestleMania every single year type stuff. You know, I guess I really never thought too deep into it. But I could see where someone could look at that and go, oh, what do you mean it's a show? You know, uh, and you and I had this discussion over a text message over the last week of, you know, everyone knows wrestling is fake, but they hate having it thrown in their face. When you see something that makes wrestling look just obviously fake, like a major whiff, punch, or kick, and the guy still takes a massive bump. You know, you, you see the one where Batista is hung up on the ropes and they kind of slingshot him backwards and he flies damn near 20 feet across that ring. You know, it, it's kind of those things where I'm like, I, I, I don't like that portion of wrestling. And like I said, I could, uh, I agree and I disagree to the point. I like Brock Lesnar's side, but maybe I think what you said could be more of the middle ground that I think I may lie, my, I, I may lie in too. Because, you know, you got Dolph Ziggler. I'm stealing the show every single night. You just want to win, not just steal the show. You but know, that's that, the thing, that's like, where, dude, he's a former like Sean, world champion. Sean was different. Like, no, Sean but, was talking about showstopper, but he always wanted to win. He never made it about my job is to make be Like, Dolph Ziggler, I think, took that sh uh, show stealer stick and kind of cranked it up to 11. 
I think that's where I have a little bit of a problem. Because to me, it doesn't seem like he really wants to win. He just wants to have the best match on the card. Where Sean, yes, he was stealing the show, but he also wanted to, to win the match. Yeah, but look, look at where they are. Look at where they are on the card. Sean you know, was at the top, and right. Dolph Ziggler was not. Like, that's a key difference between the two. But the thing is, I don't see a problem with that being a... Like, dude, there are people in real fighting who just suck at real fighting but talk a lot of shit. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a fact of life, and there are going to be characters in wrestling that are going to portray that. And I think to sit there and discount that is to discount the reality, right? That makes it, to me, that makes it more fake if there aren't people who aren't just ass and full of shit. Oh, I have no problem with being ass and full of shit, but, you know, again, when those guys are talking shit that suck at fighting and get their ass beat every time, what are they still trying to say, though? I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to win. No. I just, and that's, that's where I like to see my wrestling promos, is it's still a matter of wins and losses. Yes, I know WWE has kind of desensitized people to the wins and it losses. It is, scenario. but the thing is, dude, you can't, because, like, Gorgeous George in, like, the fucking 40s did the same shit, and they called it psychology. And that's the thing, is, like, dude, you could, because wrestling is a work, you could justify anything strategically in a fight, because weird, weirder shit has worked in real life, you know? And so to sit there and say, oh, well, like, this, this guy, he's just here to put on a show, and it's like, yeah, that's what Gorgeous George did to get in his opponent's head and then win and it was all an right. act that was the whole sure. gimmick and so that was like the whole gimmick but it wasn't my whole gimmick wasn't just trying to have the best match my my gimmick was trying to be this androgynous character yeah, but that's that in the, it's in the in art of war dude so like, i could win so you got soon. a guy going i'm gonna steal the show yeah how soon, are you gonna soon. win by just stealing the show you can have a fantastic match as soon, dude, you know soon, 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 art of war dog like, the Art of War. This is a 3,000-year-old book on fighting, and it tells you to do that, to feign disinterest, to lull your opponent into a false sense, a false sense of security and then attack them from behind, right? Feign disinterest. Yeah, man, I'm not really here to win. I'm here to steal the show. I just want to look good. Meanwhile, I'm kicking your ass. You know what I mean? Like, that's a strategic that's thing. And that's not to say like someone like Dolph Ziggler doesn't have fantastic matches and uh -oh, you look, see the urgency of him trying to win. His matches are are great and you see him. Like, don't put somebody down, he rushes for the cover. He's trying to win during that match. I guess for me, it's just one of the things I just, I guess I just don't like when, I, when someone says the show. And, and this is me because even when I was promoting events, I never called my events show. I never did. They were events. Well, yeah, that's like a marketing thing. Show, but I didn't like the term show for me because to me, show, show is like a TV show, something scripted, something, you know, I'm, I'm presenting a product that, yes, it is predetermined, and yes, there's choreographed uh, things from it, but I, want, I don't like... See, man, this is why wrestling... Dude, this is why wrestling doesn't get taken care of. Or taken uh, serious. Because it still has that mindset that it's a fucking sport. Like, it's not. I, I don't care that, like, you want it to feel like a sport, but it's not. It's theater, dude. This is Shakespeare. So, like... It is, but you can still have the differences. This is, this is you can have the difference, but to sit there with wrestlers ignoring the fact that they're actors is no worse than actors trying to say that wrestlers aren't legit actors. This is what I'm saying, is like to sit there and be like, oh, well, I'm a competitor. This is, this is like that backwards smugness out of Brock Lesnar is really what it is. Oh, yeah, no, I'm a real fighter. I'm not a fucking actor. And it's like, shut the fuck up, dude. You're an actor. I don't care that you used to also be a real fighter. Bruce Lee kept it real. He's like, I'm an actor and a fighter. I will fuck you up and I will make it look good. And you know what? The UFC was founded on the idea of Bruce Lee versus Muhammad Ali. So even then, Brock Lesnar, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You could probably kick my ass, but you're still a dumbass bag of meat if that's what you're taking. <laughs> but see, here's the thing. If you had everyone treating it like a sport, to me it's boring. You know, this is why I watch different Because it's of not a I've sport. I've been watching WWE since WrestleMania. And you get a totally different presentation there than what you would get if you watched the New Japan show. And that's where New Japan takes it a little bit more literally on the sports side of things. And that's... I'm not saying everyone has to be a sport-driven show. 
you know, you look at AEW. Are they more sport driven than entertainment driven like WWE? But they are trying to find that balance because they know they need to have that balance. You need to have the entertainment factor to draw people in. It can't just be match, 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 where, you know, just guy A beating guy B, girl A beating girl B. It's, it's you can't, you can't just present that and expect to receive, uh, a get out of your niche fan base. This is where a lot of, like, the indie promotions, why they're kind of stuck in, like, that niche because they present a single, a singular type of product. Uh, but, like, with WWE, they are more entertainment-based than wrestling. As I put it, they're, they're a uh, TV show about wrestling. AEW is a, is a wrestling TV show. Uh, uh, I say WWE is more of a variety roster show than anything. Because half of the time, half of their segments are live musical acts or live comedy acts or, you know, backstage drama. That, like, the majority of their show, there's actually very little wrestling, even on their pay-per-views. Like, they're more of an old-school vaudeville company than anything that features wrestling on it. Yeah, even Austin Creed, he said, he, he said it, and I actually agree with him. Pro wrestling is, the, uh, is an evolution of Shakespeare in the Round. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying. That's where. That's why I can't get down with what Brock Lesnar's saying. Like, dude, wrestling stopped being a sport in like the 20s. Like, it's not. I, see, I see his point as in, just like I said, you don't want it thrown in your face that it's a show. You know, imagine if you're watching. You're in the middle of, you know, watching the Return of the Jedi, and Luke and Vader are fighting. The next thing you know, they they, they just stop because someone whips a lightsaber swing, and they just stand there and stare at each other for 30 seconds. It's going to take you out of the immersiveness of what you're watching. Um, and that's where well, I yeah, but I, that's I, what I, bad. That's my guess of where he's trying to get. What he's trying to get is like, hey guys, we're presenting that what we're doing in the ring is legitimate. We're not sitting here going, hey, I'm going to fake punch you in the face for the next 15 minutes. No, we're, well, we're, yeah, we're be- it's a show that we're treating like it's an actual, like it's real. Again, it's like watching any scripted show and then they just look at the camera, you know, all like what like a Deadpool would do, you know, where he just like breaks the fourth wall. That's, to me, I think that's what, that's his meaning behind you're saying well, no, what it show? is with Brock Lesnar at that point you're telling people hey yeah you're watching a scripted TV show it's not really real and it be kind of like you know I don't think that's where he's coming from he looks at you and then breaks character and now it's like hi Jim Parsons here you know type thing I don't think that's where Brock is coming from Brock is coming from the perspective of what we do as wrestlers is martial arts exhibition and so what I am doing when I am out there even though I am portraying a character I am showing the actual moves that work in actual martial arts and so this is serious like this is a combat performance and I'm here to show you the effectiveness of my fighting style in a way that isn't going to actually kill people that's the where that's where Brock Lesnar is looking at this and that's kind of the Lufez mentality of like I'm here to perform actual martial arts you know um so I think that's where Brock Lesnar is coming from is like dude we're not here to like dance we're here to perform a fight and i'm an actual fighter i know how this shit works like this is serious because people get hurt you know and so i see that's where brock i think that's my interpretation of what he has said because he doesn't see this as um more than a martial arts exhibition and he is a very serious martial artist. He's dedicated his life to fighting, you know, not just wrestling, but just fighting and martial arts. So to him, it's like, dude, you're you're turning my martial arts exhibition into a joke. I'm not here to dance and play patty cake. I'm here to show you, like, hey, this is the Kimura lock. This is how you put it in. If you do this, your pers- the person attacking you isn't attacking you anymore. This could save people's lives. This is serious stuff. Yes, we're in character, but. Let's not get away from what we're all about. I'm and saying... Watch most of Brock's... You can even go back to when he first came in in 2002 until he left, what, oh, 2004? Oh, man, he was only there for two years. That is so weird to think about. Um, when you go watch anything, even from that two-year run until he came back in 2012, uh, and you just watch anything, most of the stuff he's involved in isn't... There can be comedy sprinkled in, 
but he doesn't, he treats every, everything he's a part of feels like a real fight, you know, um, it's not, there's, there's not a whole lot of le uh, levity to, to his angles, it's a lot of just, you know, it feels very much UFC, you know, this is how we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to beat your ass, I'm going to F5 you, I'm going to tap you out, I'm going to choke you, it doesn't matter, I'm going to beat your ass. And maybe it's just, I don't like to be part of that stuff, you know, maybe that's it. Uh, but I don't know, I, like I said, I see his side of things about not wanting it to be called a show around him. Like I said, I promoted my shows as events because I didn't want people thinking it's just, it's a show, it's an event. Uh, and I had heard another local promoter in LA, his name's Dave Marquez. And I say local promoter in LA, that's where he's at. The dude's promoted all over the globe. Uh, very, very smart. He has his theories on the business. Some things I agree with, some things I disagree with. He's very old school. He loves the studio style wrestling programs, like what you would have seen from like an old, old uh, Saturday night, like WCW Saturday night back in the TV studio days. And I, I got to work for Marquez doing his TV studio shows, and it was exactly that. I mean, we take his weekly show called Championship Wrestling from Hollywood inside the same studio that Rob Deerdeck did, or however you say his last name, taped Ridiculousness. It was in the same room, you know? Uh, but that's the type of wrestling he likes. And I remember listening to hear him talk about, you know, promoting shows, and he's just like, it's, it's an event. You know, it's not just a show, it's an event. And I was like, hey, I, I really like that, that aspect, I like that thought process, and that's when I changed everything. Like even my, my website for New Wave Pro Wrestling, for our events, it was under a link called Shows. I changed it to events when I got home that night, because I was like, man, I really like that. It feels like it adds a little bit of legitimacy, or something, a little bit of grandiose to it. Um, and maybe calling it, to me calling it a show is, is just kind of like, to me, it takes it down a little bit. But again, that's my opinion. I know every, not everyone's going to agree with me. You obviously don't agree with me. And well, no. You and I have different uh, thoughts on it. It's more of a marketing that's, that's thing. I think about it when, when I think about... We're arguing two different points. See, I agree with we you. Are. We're arguing two different... We're not, ar we're not even talking about the same uh, subject. Like, I agree with you. To That's a marketing thing. Like, you want your your uh, live performance to be the biggest, most spectacular live performance ever. Um, so you would call them events rather than shows. I don't think that's what Brock Lesnar is getting at, though. I think it's just that Brock Lesnar doesn't like the sissification of, like, martial arts execution. Is what well, no, it I, seems what to I mean is like I don't like my I didn't like my events called shows period. I, I would rather someone say this next event, even if you listen to it on like like if you're watching Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW, New Japan, if if I don't even like when the announcers say our next show well, stay in your seat. Like you know what I'm saying? It's to me it's like listen, you're not um, but not on this you're, you're not that uh, what's that medieval times, you know. It's well, not a movie theater yeah, but show it's a t time. it is you know, a TV that's, that's, show. But but they even talk about that for you know I know they call them live events or whatever. But they even say our next show. I don't like when I hear shows referring to wrestling events, live events, TV, whatever. Again, that's just me. I, I'm not a fan of people calling it a sh calling it a show. Uh, you know, Raw, yes, is a TV show. SmackDown, Dynamite, those are TV shows. But they're being taped at a wrestling event. You know I what I'm saying? That's, that. that's where I, that's where I kind of go sideways. Is I don't like when the event is called. The show. Yeah, I feel you on that. I don't think that that has anything to do with what Brock was saying. <laughs> but... it, it may not. No one knows. There's no context to it other than this is what. But what what he with a possible yeah. conversation that someone had leaked or whatever it could be complete bullshit for all we know yeah uh, but I just found that I just found it pretty interesting and I, I just wanted to hear your take on on the show but uh, well speaking of shows and we were talking about how wrestling promotions are different and all of that you know and like how we have dynamite and rampage with, and a, how AEW presents their their events differently than the WWE does or versus New Japan. And Freddie Prinze Jr. has, and this isn't new, new news, uh, it just kind of came up, uh, more stuff came up today, because uh, he, he posts about it on Twitter. 
he wants to start a new wrestling promotion. And let's go, I want to go over the details of what he said before we start picking it apart, shitting on it, praising oh, it, whatever yeah. we're going to do. So he would like to start it within 18 months. He wants a two hour show, has the money for a three year plan. He wants storylines based in reality, men and women, women to give an equal time. He wants to own the space that it's filmed in. He wants it a part of uh, the Screen Actors Guild, but he doesn't have a TV contract yet. I, mean, I am actually, I've been following Freddie Prince for a long time. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the movies he's done. And I was very intrigued when I started listening to him talk about wrestling lately. And he actually has his own wrestling podcast called Wrestling with Freddie. Um, the future has arrived. I like the guy's takes on wrestling. I, you know, I like that he was in WWE as a writer, and it seemed like he, it wasn't just a gig. It felt like he was he wanted to be there, a true fan of wrestling. But uh, yeah. Um, what do you think about Freddie Prince Jr. possibly starting in his own wrestling game? First of all, I don't have a problem with him like as a wrestling fan, but like because I'm old, I grew up in the era when he was just a teen heartthrob. So I can't look at him yeah. without looking at like to me, Freddie Prince Jr. I mean, if you're not old, then like he's like the Jonas Brothers to me. So it's like any mention of him, I just fucking roll my eyes and I'm like, oh fuck that fucker! Like, are we like? Are we trying to get 14-year-old girls in on this? And then it's like, no, he's an actual, like, wrestling fan. And it's like, okay, man, I'll I'll not, like, hate him. But, like, I just never really cared for the guy because he doesn't make the kind of stuff that appeals to people like me. Like, he makes movies that appeal to teenage girls and bored housewives now. So as far as, like, being a fan of him. I didn't even tell you the last movie he did. From what I understand, I think it was fucking uh, Scooby Doo, if I'm not. Like, Dude, that was like 18 years ago. Yeah, I don't. Th I think he's been all in on writing ever since then. No, you know what it was? He became a stay-at-home dad. I mean, I respect uh, that. Michelle Gellar went and did the did the TV and movie stuff. He stayed at home with the kids. I mean, I'm not hating on him for that. I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, like I know he wrote at the WWE, and I know some of his takes and stuff, and. and all of that. I just, I got problems with this whole project. I got problems with it. I looked Let's over it. Let's hear him. You sent me this shit and you're like, hey, I want to discuss this on the show. And I looked over it and I was like, oh, fuck. And I couldn't help but like roll my eyes a lot. Um, so as far as like, man, this is going to go in directions I'm concerned about going in. As a wrestling show, cool, man. Like two hour show. He can get a TV deal, blah, 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 blah. I don't like, you know what, you say what you're going to say and then I'm going to be mine. Because mine is going to be a big thing. You do what you're going to say. All right. So just looking at those those what, six or seven, eight bullet points that, that I brought up, one of the things that really stood out to me, which is something that I can't, I mean, I could believe it because of the carny nature of professional wrestling, but the fact that he wants the Screen Actors Guild to be a part of it. Wow, see that? You yeah, already went right to where I was trying to duck. Oh, okay. But the, see, the, the reason I like it is because before, like with AEW, they when, for their full-time wrestlers, they are providing health care, health insurance, and all that to them. WWE doesn't do that at all. Yes, you've got Vince's insurance. You get hurt, you get hurt in his ring. Everything everything you just paid for, you get top-notch doctors, some of the best in the world uh, to help repair you, which is great, but he doesn't pay for help. Yeah. You have to go find that on your own. Hell, taxes aren't even taken out of your paychecks. You have yeah. to save your money and do the math yourself to know how much taxes you owe at the end of the year. They don't do any of that shit. You know, and I'm me, fine you know, with all that, though. I see that as a bonus. Well, for me... To, well, it, it is, but it isn't. As so, I, I knew uh, people that worked there. Tax season for them was always a pain in the ass. They tax season's a pain in the ass, no matter what. Yeah, like. But, yeah, but for someone who works in a normal nine to five, your it's not a nine to five. Of, I'm just saying, someone who works in a normal nine to five, your taxes are taken out of your paycheck. Okay, but like, that's not wrestling. I don't have to think about how much I have to pay in. Yeah, but you you're know, not a wrestler. You know, I have to. I'm not a wrestler. No, but again, they sign those contracts. They, I'm not saying it's wrong or right. 
I'm just saying that's something that they have to do themselves. It's not provided for by the company. But if you work in any normal job, that's typically how it's done, unless you are a contractor. Yes, even contractor jobs, they don't, a lot of things they don't do. You know, I have contractors that work for the shoot job that I have that don't get holiday pay. They don't get vacations. They don't get uh, personal time off. They don't get sick time. They don't get any of that because it's it's a contractor job. But again, you what you you agreed to it, so you can't really complain. Like I said, I'm not trying to poke hole or trying to poke at WWE or anyone else. I'm just surprised. You know, the Screen Actors Guild is a part of almost anything entertainment related, commercials, uh, movies, TV shows. I'm just surprised they haven't encroached into the wrestling space yet. Because they're not welcome. Into that entertainment sector. They're not, well, they're not welcome. welcome by Vince. He doesn't want a union. Yeah, I, you know, no, it's not tried about... To do that. Look what happened. Here's the deal. First of all, all right, man, I'm not pro-union. Let's just get that out the gate. Um, I'm not anti-union either. I think that unions serve a purpose, a very, very important purpose in our society. But I feel like that unions, for the most part, have overstaffed their bounds as far as modern society goes. Um, I don't think that wrestling needs a union. I think wrestling is, needs something. But it doesn't necessarily have to be the union as the solution. Um, I like what AEW is doing, and I'm, again, I'm not pro-union, but I'm also not anti-union. I like the concept of the idea of unions. I like what they were originally created to do. I do not think that that is what unions do anymore. Unions now exist specifically to make sure that the union continues to exist. They don't do anything to actually help people keep their jobs, or they don't do... I disagree. Depending on the union. I, I Again, personal, it's very, not, very not situational. Not to me, but personal to my family. It, uh, positive and negative union experience. Again, and, and again, it's different for every union. And that's that's why this is kind of a touchy a touchy thing. I don't like the involvement of the Screen Actors Guild. It's one of the most horrible, corrupt organizations on the planet. They literally, <laughs> like, dude, if the people didn't backlash about Will Smith, they would have treated that shit like one of the one of the fucking historic moments of the Oscars, right? That would have been in fucking montages. Oh, look at, look at what wild shit. They probably would have tried to market that shit, but people were like, hey, this is actually wrong and we shouldn't be celebrating this in fuck Will probably Smith. actually tried to script it into a future. Yeah, a, a and, future you know, I'm not saying it was set up, but I'm saying that they probably would have cashed in on that shit had the people not stepped up and said, no, dude, you guys are disgusting. I don't want yes. wrestling to have anything to do with Hollywood. I hate Hollywood. I don't want, I don't watch hardly any TVs or movies. You know this. Like, you have people ask, yeah. have you seen this? No, I haven't. Nope. <laughs> you know, I'm not. I watch wrestling because it's not involved in any of that. And Freddie Prince Jr. wants to bring that shit to my wrestling, and I don't want it. I don't want the Screen Actors Guild involvement in wrestling at all. I will stop watching if it is. I look at it as, as a positive for men and women who, you know, yes, if you started a, if you started a business, you should be able to provide health care to your employees. I don't think so. See, no, this is going to turn us into a full on. I'm not going to go political on this, trust me. No, but I'm saying that uh, one of the things that I love about wrestling. Somebody, at least giving somebody a chance to access health, health, health benefits that they wouldn't, ha that they'd have to go find on their own. I knew, I knew people that See, were. See, but I find that as a bonus. That, that didn't have health insurance because their main job was independent wrestling. But so what they would do is they would take like uh, stunt gigs, extra gigs to do on movies, TV shows. Like you could go, shit, go watch an episode of Entourage from like 2006. You see Christopher Daniels standing in the background of a major scene. Uh, you know, these guys, people would do this to get into the Screen Actors Guild in order to get health insurance. You See, know, I and, don't, and I for don't. me, that's, 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 that's key for a lot of people. It may not be key for you, but health insurance is a major thing for a lot of people. And health insurance is a you know, scam. Even through, well, I'm not going to go into that. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, bro. I'm going to agree with you, but at the same time, you know, there's a difference between, you know, I know what, would, what I would probably have to pay for things if I didn't, and I know what I'm paying for things with. You know, I... I, I, I think our health insurance industry is a scam and it's bullshit. I even worked for them for a couple of years. It, and I, I still believe that. But the access to affordable health care 
to me is a crucial thing for something like professional wrestling. I wrestled for two to three years with no health insurance. I got whiplash during a match. I couldn't go see a doctor because I didn't have the funds to pay for it. So I just took time off. I slept with no pillows see, that's under not a my problem. head because it hurt me for like three months. That's um, not an issue with that. wrestling, though. Insurance, that's an issue. To, that's an issue with. I would have gone to get, get fixed. Yeah, this is an issue that's, with that's the health insurance in industry. This is not an issue with wrestling. I'm saying, no, no, dude, I don't want SAG and I don't want those nasty motherfuckers near my industry. I just don't. Dude, those are Jeffrey Epstein ass motherfuckers, and I don't want them in wrestling. And I don't like Freddie Prince Jr. wanting to bring. You know, the fucking, what's the what, the Weinstein fuckers? Like, dude, that's Hollywood. That's the Screen Actors oh, Guild. Those, those people. Okay, those people that ran that town and that industry for the past hundred fucking years have been fucking kids. I don't want them in wrestling. We got enough kid fuckers as it is. And so, like, there is no argument you can make to justify what Pre Freddie Prince Jr. wants to do to me. Because it's like, dude, the ends will never justify the means, dog. People could get health insurance, and I don't think health insurance is worth having an association with people that are tied to the Weinstein Company. Well... Like, I, I see your point. I don't know how much of it's tied. I don't know shit about the Screen Actors Guild. I don't know who runs it. I don't know who's tied. Exactly. I don't, I don't They're shadowy it. motherfuckers who don't put the their face on TV. Do, but I know the benefits that they have offered to people. Yeah, so do you want to shake hands with the devil? Like, that's what it is. Like, are we going to shake hands with the devil so I can get health insurance? No, it is not extreme. We're talking about literal child fuckers. Like, this is like, uh, to me, working with Hollywood is no worse than working with Putin. Like, it, like, like to me, that's like working with Hitler. It's like, wait, you're going to go work with the fucking devil. Like, these people are evil. Don't bring them near my wrestling. Dude, I get it. We had Jake the Snake's dad in our industry. It's not perfect. But adding those guys is only going to be worse. But see, I don't know if that's the thing. Is if it's just from a being able to be a part of that. Now, if that union has a say in who Freddie can hire, fire, because that was one of the issues I saw with the union. My father was that's a postal what the worker. Union, that's what the SAG years. does. But, that's like again, literally I, their I only... What they're, if, if, I don't know what they're hooks in. Like I said, my father was a, was a postal worker. He was a part of the postal workers union. He got he had his stuff saved by the union the when he was road. when things oh, were going wrong. He was in the right, and people uh, his managers didn't agree. They wanted him fired. The union had his back, that and he just died. But I've also watched that same union take a guy who just fucked up everything and refuse to let the post office fire him. Again, good and bad, and, and, and that's that's what, as I don't know what hooks they're going to have. You know, we're, we're, we're judging this based on a tweet with wants to be a part of SAG. Yeah, he, he is a part of SAG. How much of an effort. I haven't seen how much of SAG is what he would like to be a part of it. I don't know if they're going to have hooks in to tell him what he, who he can hire, who he can't fire. You know, uh, those types of things. Now, if that happens, I got a problem with that. See, you know, I just, uh, I would have had more respect if he was just going to start a wrestler's union. Again, I'm not anti-union, I'm not pro-union. I think every union is different in every situation and needs its own little nuance. And I'm not against a wrestling union. I'm not pro a wrestler. I think that there are better ways. I like wrestlers being independent contractors. I would prefer to be an independent contractor. I like the way AEW does things. But if Freddie Prince Jr. thinks it would be better to start a union, then I would be like, hey, man, I would support that. I would support anybody starting a wrestling union because it's like, hey, man, it may solve some of the problems. Um, it won't solve all of the problems, but it may help with a lot of them. It'll probably cause a lot of problems. Yeah, but, I mean, again, I think I don't... I just think that a union to me is no different than a company. It's a company that sells labor. And they try to act like there's some sort of sanctimonious like heroes that are protecting the common man. It's like, no, you're not protecting the common man. You're a corporation with a different name. And I treat I treat unions the way I treat corporations. Okay, Walmart is not fucking like they're evil, but like that doesn't mean that I don't shop at Walmart. You know, and so because the guy that works at my local Walmart is just a regular guy trying to pay bills. So when I shop there, I'm supporting the local, like, you know, my local people. 
But, like, as far as the union goes, like, Freddie Prince Jr., him wanting to bring SAG into this instantly shuts down any support. Like, I don't care what the fuck he's trying to do or what, like, uh, what outcomes he's trying to, whatever positivity he's trying to bring. The fact that you would dare involve those motherfuckers is where I draw the line. I'm like, no, fuck you, fuck them. Keep them a million miles away from here. <laughs> like, again, don't even I don't entertain. What, I won't even entertain. I don't even know what their I don't even know what their limit their involvement is. But one thing that was pretty cool today that he also posted was uh, there was a building he was looking at, and he, uh, he he didn't get it, but he was really amazed, and it kind of got him thinking. Like he was like, man, it was at, he was like it was at the top of this building. They had an interior, and then the roof was a part of it. And he was like, it was in downtown LA. He goes, don't tell me. A show on top of a, of a high rise in downtown LA with the downtown LA skyline in the background wouldn't look badass. I was like, damn, he's got a point. He didn't get it. He's like, it was way too much money. And he goes, and someone else already picked it up. He's like, but he was like, that would have looked pretty cool. And I was like, damn, that would have been pretty cool. I, like I said, I'm hoping he does something. You know, I'm not against, I know, I know you're not against, you're not for having SAG be a part of it. Again, I don't know what the ramp, what, The thing is, if SAG looked. becomes a part of it, SAG will own the industry. Like I said, I'm because that's what they, they do. They monopolize. Only... They I they haven't tried to already because every time like it's union busting. Like as awful as it is that like Vince McMahon did union busting in like the 80s and whatnot. That's what kept SAG out, and that's like it's it sucks because like the union busting that the industry has done. It doesn't. It hasn't necessarily helped anyone either, right? There are a lot of people that think the industry would be better off with a union, and there are benefits to a union that you can't deny, even if you're anti-union. So, like in that respect, yeah, like Vince union busting was kind of bad, but it was also good because you know those fucking corrupt motherfuckers were trying to get their fingers in there, and if they got in to wrestling, that's it. It's over. There is no dude. The independents. That's they're dead. The indies die. If SAG oh, is involved, there are no indies. Quite possibly. But you know what also almost killed the indies? Uh, athletic commission. It's, it's ridiculous. Now, yeah, Vince again, McMahon it, saved the industry another, from that too. He did? I'll give you that. He fought the athletic commissions. Hey, guess what, guys? We're not a sport. We're predetermined. We're, we're not real, so we don't fall under your athletic commission. Dude. Vince was smart to get away from those. That saved the I business. never had to People deal with them because, that... Calif because indie, uh, professional wrestling never fell to the athletic commission in California, uh, which was great. Uh, they tried to. Dude, there was even a scam while I was on the indies. These dudes in suits showed up to random indie shows before they started and would find who else who was in charge and go, all right, I'm shutting you down if you don't pay me a fee right now. Yeah, that's and California it out politics. to be a fucking scam. It wasn't real. People were just... But it happened. People ended up paying because they were like, oh, shit. Wait, really? I'm supposed to be a part of the Athletic Commission? I didn't know that. The thing because is, you can get away with no that. pays attention to that shit. You can get away with but that yeah. in California because it does actually happen. California regularly just shows up and says, hey, man, here's this $50,000 fine. Dude, I had a friend who ran a fucking video arcade that's got shut down due to fines and bullshit. Where they just show up and they're like, "Hey, you know what? Your uh, your bathroom door that you just fixed to help our uh, to to reach our specifications. Yeah, we've decided to change those specifications by three inches. You have until Monday to redo your doors that you just redid because we told you to redid them, and you have to pay us fifty thousand dollars. So." They do that here, in, in, and and that's why I'm like, you know, but I don't the want. Is, they don't, they don't fall to to pro wrestling, and people who wouldn't have known that, like at the time, I knew, I knew athlete, the athletic commission had no jurisdiction over professional wrestling, but it actually became a really hot topic. Like it was a, like people thought that the California State Athletic Commission was about to re, go back into professional wrestling. And it was all it was all bullshit because it was a scam. People saw something there and did it. And there was actually one indie promoter who, when this was all going on, he booked a show. Midway through the show, a guy runs in, comes in from the entrance, grabs the mic. He's wearing a suit, and he's like, "I'm from the state athletic commission. I'm shutting this shit down." Uh, and they worked it into an angle. 
uh, and the guy got his ass beat and carried out, but it was, you know, it was topical because at the time, indie promoters were seeing this happen. It never happened to, to me when I was running shows. I, I don't even remember the year it was, uh, but I'm pretty sure I was still running at the time. But again, I knew the state athletic commissions had no jurisdiction, so it would have been me just going, all right, call somebody. Yeah, because... The happens. thing is, if I'm paying a fine, I'm paying a fine in a cashier's check. So the, if somebody showed up and shut the show down, I would want a warrant. I would want police involvement. Oh, yeah. And if I'm paying a fine, I'm paying in a cashier's check. So you're not getting any money from me today because we're outside of business hours. So if you want to walk with me to the bank tomorrow to receive the cashier's check that will be made payable into your name. What is your name, sir? Thank you, Mr. <laughs> payable exactly to you in your name to cover this fine. And I want documentation for from my bank that I paid this fine and I want to see all of that documentation uh, documentation as I pay that fine and if you want your money from the night I'm gonna have to finish the show like to me that's just bad business some nights I, even, some nights I would even finish the show and have to run to the ATM just to make payroll yeah, it's Jesus. like, to me, that's just bad business if you're getting but, caught in that kind of scam. Because, like... But, right, but, you know, people, people believed it because they didn't know. You know, there's a... That's the one thing that is kind of good and bad about professional wrestling is anybody can really... If you've got a little bit of money, anyone could put on a show. Can't tell you how many fans I saw going, I could do that. Ran one show, dropped 15 Gs, and you never saw him again. You know, because they, they don't. And, and yeah. that's the one thing, like, like with Freddie, would he do it? I think he's got enough connections with different television markets, probably different studios to potentially get to get into it. Uh, you know, it's the same thing like with Tony Khan. He had no experience running a wrestling show. He had just been a fan his entire life. Yeah, but, you know, you I know, don't like, think you need experience running a wrestling show to be able to run a business. You can hire that, that, someone that can book. And that, that's the difference. Like everyone calls, you know, everyone kind of shits on Tony Khan and, and, and about that whole thing. And I'm just like, okay, here's the difference. Yes, he didn't, he had no experience with wrestling. The dude helps run an NFL football team. He's got a, he's, I think the Premier League, I don't, I don't follow uh, European football. Uh, I don't, but he, got, soccer, he has his own team. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I have enough European friends that don't call it soccer, so it just kind of rubbed off on me. I don't like it. I don't watch it. It's boring to me. But, uh, you know, he, he's he got enough business sense to know when he's getting snowed, in my opinion. Exactly. Uh, it and, has nothing and, to do and with Prince may not have that business acumen. He may just have the wrestling acumen. So he probably would need a business partner. He says he could cover... Because he's done production the work in... Three years. No, he's got a business acumen. He's done production. He's worked as a producer. In See, I don't know much about his off-screen career. Yeah. Outside so of his time in WWE. If you've done production I, I work like, in I Hollywood, the guy, you've got a business. You've got a business sense. Um, my thing is, like, I'm not really concerned with that. I'm just concerned with him bringing Hollywood into the, the business. That's what I have a problem I think, with. Honestly, if, if they have more hooks than just this is a way for my employees to get health insurance or, or an, an affordable health care. If there's more hooks into it, like we'll be able to tell you you can't fire this person or you can't hire these people, that will be, that's something that, that I don't believe should be a part of it. If he's running the show, he should have full say in, you know. Uh, but again, I, guess I don't know how much they're going to want to be a part of it. If they're going to want to be a part of business decisions, I wouldn't put it in. They Man, will. That's, that's that, dude. That's that's what they do. That's what, like, that's what a union does is monopolize labor. That's that's what they do. Like, that's, well, I, that's I, I not. It, but I don't know how. I, I don't know how SAG works. I was never a part of it. Uh, I did do one. Let thing me just that put it this way: How many movies? I never looked into it. How many movies do you get to go and watch in a major theater with a major budget that doesn't have the majority of their cast? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They monopolize labor. That's yeah. that's that's well, what they, they do. To, and, and I've heard things about you know oh we have to follow these labor laws. Oh, can't work these. We got to take a break because it's been four hours and the crew have to go do this now. Um, you know, and I've, I've heard about those things. And again, some some of it's for the well-being of the person, some of it's not. 
I find some of it to be a little overbearing. I no, find some of it to no be entity, reasonable. there isn't an entity in existence whose sole purpose isn't to just continue to exist. A union no, does oh, not no, exist yeah. to serve workers. A union that's exists a to continue to exist. So that's my problem, is a union exists to monopolize labor or a union monopolizes labor as its means to continue to exist. I don't like that. I don't trust that. And I don't trust anyone that wants to say that they're a part of that in my best interest. Like, I just, I don't like it. I'm not for it. And that's the most evil union of them all. I don't think all unions are evil. There's a local electricians union that a lot of my friends work at and they take care of their people. Right. Unions do serve a purpose, but the nitty gritty is that a union exists to monopolize labor. And I would not want the Screen Actors Guild monopolizing the pro wrestling industry's labor. Because I just don't think no matter what benefits they bring, it will not outweigh the negatives of that organization being involved in our industry. But it sucks because every wrestler wants to fucking move on to be an actor. So, I mean, it's only in a matter, of, it's only an eventuality. I'm not surprised that WWE doesn't work with those fuckers. I think it's because the WWE is union busted for so long. I am surprised. That, well, I'm not surprised that they don't because Vince doesn't want a union. Yeah. You know, um, but I'm just surprised they never kind of tried to get into the wrestling space. You know, it's, and they maybe had and they were worried. I don't know. Uh, I haven't read anything about that. It's just, it's just interesting to think about what, what he, how, how different he would, the differences he would bring. How would he present his wrestling product? Because I'll be honest, he even says he only, when he was a writer there, he only got one angle on television, and that was Jeff Hardy winning the the WWE title when he beat Triple H and Edge in that uh, triple threat match at Armageddon. Two, 2008, I want to say it was. Um, that that whole storyline of Jeff's lead up to being the champ, that was written by Freddie. Yeah, I'm. I, it just seems to me like listening to Freddie's opinions on the industry. I don't know what he, because he's a worker, and I don't know what he would offer that would be different to AEW. That's one of my concerns there. I'm interested. But, like, you also think about that, like, Billy Corgan could be said the same, right? And NWA sure. is, you know, primarily a work rate promotion. You look at who they hire, you know, like, they're, they're more focused on work rate rather than spectacle. And they're very different from AEW themselves. So they do studio shows, yeah. So it's like I, I, do, I don't think Freddie Prince Jr. is going to have a problem making his show different. My only concern is his involvement with SAG, but I think Up that him goes. trying to start a promotion is a big telltale sign for me that we're in the wrestling boom. Because oh, yeah. he's trying to, he's seeing an opportunity that all the promotions in the world right now aren't serving in the market. So what he's seeing is there is growth in the market and that you know, when you think about it, there's really only, what, four major promotions. AEW, WWE, no, in the world. AEW, WWE, AAA, and New Japan. You wouldn't throw Impact in there? No, because, like, Impact isn't anywhere near the size of AEW, WWE, or New Japan. I would say Impact is about the size of AAA. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, New Japan draws that in the States, but New Japan draws fucking quadruple that in, you know, ja Japan. Dude, New Japan's next show in, in D.C., I think, was drawn like 18 to 2,000 people. Yeah, New Japan they, is amazing. They, I consider that and now the fact that the travel day. restrictions have dropped, I, it, like, dude, their next Capital Collision show, it's the D.C. show. The D, they just announced the main event, the U.S. heavyweight title match. Is in a four way. Champion Tanahashi is going to defend against John Moxley, Juice Robinson, and Will Austin. Which that match That's is going to be That's going to fucking draw. Yeah. Holy shit, I want to see that. I actually uh, watched uh, Wrestling Dantaku. I haven't really been super into New Japan in the last year or two, uh, but I watched Dantaku because I heard it was really good. And holy shit, it knocked it out of the fucking park. 
Uh, New Japan's starting to get wa- to the point where I'm like, I can't miss this again. Dude, if uh, New Japan, New Japan's whole, only problem is distribution. They're the modern day yes. ECW. Yes. There's just, dude, if they could get on TV, the product sells itself. Like, New Japan they're is fantastic. TV. Yeah, but they're, they're not. On TV. They're, they're on not, Access TV. They're not on TNT no. or something like that. No, you know, no. Like, they're on the same channel that Impact. Yeah, yeah. They need, if they can get some, like, big, you know, big coverage big exposure, I think they could be just as big as AEW. I think if they just get on one of the major streaming platforms that does live broadcasts, they would do it too. Same with AEW. If AEW shows up on HBO Max, I think that's going to boost their viewership. Oh yeah, by far, by far. I just, I think that Freddie Prince trying to start a promotion is just a good sign. I don't like what he wants to do. Um, but well, you don't like that he wants SAG, but you pro- if he didn't put SAG in there, you'd probably be all on board. Yeah, I mean, at I, least you know, at I, least to check it out, not not saying, hey, get the fuck out. You'd probably be like, I'll give you a watch, and if I like, I'll continue. Well, I'll watch anything wrestling. Like you know, I'll, I've watched you know some very very bad independent wrestling. <laughs> you know, like I've watched yeah, some bad third match. That was a shitty match, <laughs> right? Like I've watched some really bad wrestling in my life. But, you know, I would be open to giving the show a chance if it just doesn't have any, like, <coughs> excuse me, Hollywood involvement. I just don't want to touch anything involved with Hollywood. I know I can't, like, you know. I think that is going to be kind of tough when the guy who wants to start it is Freddie Prinze Jr. Like, but the thing is, He's kind is, of a man, part of the Hollywood legacy. I just wish that all these people talking about unions would have just gotten together with fucking, uh, Fred, uh, Fucking Ventura, Jesse Ventura, yeah. because he was setting that shit up. And it. you know what, man? He had good ideas to set up a union. He got shut down, Jesse. and like it's like, dude, I would rather Freddie Prince Jr. say, "Yo, man," and if Jesse Ventura has hookups with, uh, you know, he's involved in Hollywood, you know, not anymore. Not anymore. But I think but. he blackballed, got blackballed, but he. He talked a lot of shit about a lot of people. Yeah, but I'm saying like. You know, here's a guy that's involved in Hollywood and wrestling that yeah. wants to start a wrestler's union. And I would be more trusting of, you know, Ventura having wrestler's best interest in mind than SAG. I would agree. I would honestly, yes, I would agree. I, can, I will agree with you on that point. While I'm not, nec- I'm not against a union and I'm not necessarily against SAG just because I don't know enough about it. If I read more about it and they're as bad as you're saying... Fuck, I want no, I'd want nothing, nothing to do with them either. I'm just against a union well, for wrestlers that isn't... I a union that was a wrestler. Yeah, that's you know, what I'm saying. Is screen actors. I don't I support agreed. any I union agree. that's not started by wrestlers that is supposed to serve wrestlers. Like, that's just one of my lines in the sand is like, dude, you're supposed to have wrestlers' best interest in mind, but you're not even a wrestler. Like, who the fuck are you? You know, like, it's, it's, you're, because, the, again, a union is selling a product. They're selling labor, specifically skilled labor. And so, if they're selling wrestler labor, right, you need wrestlers, we got wrestlers. That's what, that's what a union does. I would want that organization to be run by people who actually actively do that job. Like most unions, you know, like the post office union is ran by people that work at the post office. You know, and that's the that's one of the big things for me is, dude, don't come in here and talk about bringing your outside union in here, okay? Because wrestlers look out for wrestlers and they've done fucking good enough job for the past fucking hundred years of taking care of themselves and they don't need you getting in here and fucking stealing their fucking their work their hard work and their success building this industry if a wrestler wanted to come out and say hey i'm starting a union to help my people because the promotions are fucking us and we know that they are the promotions are fucking us and we're going to stay together and stand strong that i support that's why i say i'm not anti-union and i'm not pro-union i am pro what a union is all about i am anti what unions are today so there's a (laughs) speaking of a wrestler trying to start a union. I know we're about to hit an hour and there's one more topic I want to go over, but I'll just mention this. Uh, there was a wrestler, an indie wrestler, named uh, David Scott. You don't hear his name anymore because he was a part of that speaking out movement and he had a lot of against him. 
of how poor he treated people. But the difference, what, what he was doing was his public persona. I think his real name was like oh, Max or something like that. His public persona. He even he called himself. And I, I, this Go makes me cringe thinking about it. He called himself the Bernie Sanders of professional wrestling. Definitely a far left type person. I'm not going to go into his politics right now. But he was all about, you know, he would call people out if they were like, you know, uh, assaulting. You know, he would call people out for the bullshit that he got caught fucking doing. It is not but he always the start case. of Wrestlers Union too. And it was starting to gain traction until all this shit came out about him. And it went down the fucking tubes. See, and like, and that's that's one of the things that's it's kind of like I'm all for wrestlers starting a wrestlers union. I also know how a lot of wrestlers really are. But see, and it's that's like, the thing, man. Oh, like something like that is have it done by people who understand the wrestling industry versus people who understand calling or that, people who understand post offices, electricians, things like that. That's I why hate, I'm you know, against like, that stuff, because yeah. you see how easily corrupted it is. This guy was using his position of authority within the community to skeeze on females, or fucking whatever the fuck it, he was skeezing on. It wasn't like on. he was skeezing on them, but like, there were some of it, but it was a lot of, like, this dude just manipulated chicks, yeah. lied to them, gaslit and them. And those are always the like, people that want to start like, this shit. They're always, it's was, always someone like, like that. legitimate relationship with these women not yeah. just like I'm He's trying to hook scumbag. up I'm old dude but, I've seen yeah, this so shit the people that try to start this shit yeah. are these fucking scumbags and that's why I, it never I works understand. it never works because it's always scumbags that try to start it because the people that are legit honest decent people are too busy getting their own shit done you know what, and, and my big concern is wrestling is a carny fucking industry. Dude, even at the lowest level indies, it is a carny industry. Dude, I was sitting in a in a locker room for an indie show with probably 25 people in paid attendance, and I'm sitting there like holding my neck because I was in some pain, and this guy walks up, unzips his fucking uh, his, uh, fanny pack, and just starts pulling out bottles of pills. What do you need? I got you, brother. And I'm like, He's taking this uh, to nothing. The I'm good. Thanks. That's the type of carny shit. And those are the types of carny fucking people. Yeah, that but would that's, try and no, that's, that's not carny shit, dude. You'll find that in any no, fucking dude, gym, carny, dude. You go to it. No, the, but I'm saying that's not that's <laughs> not what makes wrestling carny. Like, you, if you go to a gym, that's you're going to find it. that. It, that's part of it. I think that that's more of an issue with the drug problem and the drug epidemic in our country. It's not a wrestling issue. The way that people issue. just back talk each other, it's, it, it's always just like, absolutely, brother, fuck that guy. Yeah, you know, because it, the whole industry was built on lying. How do we make money lying to people? So the best liars in the world <laughs> got really fucking good at lying and built an industry off being the best liar in the planet, right? And then Take people are the surprised there. when, like, half of the people involved in wrestling are uh, scumbags. It's like, yo, that was, that was kind of the whole point. You know, and people like Vince McMahon have been fighting to legitimize it and move away from that for so long. And so, yeah, like, I get it, you know, that the business is carny as fuck. But also, most of the people that are carny as fuck are either crippled or dying or dead. Like, the new generation, like, like... The people that are like Kenny Omega's age are not car like they're the anti carny and Kenny Omega's almost forty. You know So it's like it's not like they're these up and coming kids. It's like dude as I was they're the adults. I'm sure now. I did some carny shit in wrestling. I'm quite sure I did. I couldn't pinpoint exactly what. I know I've done carny shit in wrestling. Well, and I hated that shit. Uh, you know, and I just think it's kind of, you know, it's the system. You've got to play within the system. And I just think, it, you know, while I think, yes, a, a wrestler's own wrestler's union would be great, it would be carny as fuck. Because that's who would try, that's who gets on top of those things. It's the politic. I can't tell you how many people I've watched politic their ways into spots, and I'm like, that dude is trash. I'm not saying I'm better, but that dude is trash. There's so many better people that you could get, but he politicked his way into that top spot. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's exactly how I think a wrestler's union would end up eventually. It would start out with the absolute best intentions and end up fucking people. That's Just like you said, at the end, a lot of it kind of fucks people over because it's a corrupt fucking thing. Yes, there's positives. Yes, there's a lot of negatives. 
I think that if it if it was kept true, it would be good. But if it gets, I just. I, I just know, think man. at the end of the day, I'm big on personal responsibility. And the union is kind of a hedge on personal responsibility. And In case some shit like. goes down, I have a bunch of people to watch out for me, even if it's my fault. That's the that's like kind of the problem with it. And I think the that's independent contractor like thing, man, re the way Tony Khan respects the independent contract that i think is the best way like dude i don't want your fucking imp insurance that you give me at your job right i always try to turn that shit down until fucking obamacare i don't want your insurance fuck that i'll negotiate my own prices with my own fucking doctor you know what i mean like and that's what i do i go to the fucking clinics in the fucking hood i go there and i talk to the fucking doctor who is certified i can see their doctorate on the wall there are no better or worse doctor than you will find at your suburb fucking hospital it's just a lot of people are afraid to go to the fucking hood where here real actual capitalism takes place. And I go and I talk to my doctor and I say, this is what's wrong. And my doctor advises me and then they, I pay him cash. Right? And like that's how I did it when I was working. That's how I always did it. I always declined medical insurance. I think the whole industry is a scam and I think that that's not going to help anybody. And like anybody trying to remove the independent contractor freedom from wrestling, I just find a little bit suspect because having that freedom to me is one of the things that made the industry and the business so attractive to me. Because a wrestler, you're not an employee, dude. You're a boss. You run your own business. I don't know why wrestlers are so in a rush to give that up. Yeah, it's hard, dude. You have to pay your own insurance. It's hard. You have to pay your own ta yes, taxes. But you run a business, man. You own your own shit. You work for who you want, when you want, and you can't put a price on it. Compare that statement to people in AEW to people in WWE. Now, yes. Because WWE is not... Or rumor is that they've recently gotten more lenient or abolished their whole third party thing for like Cameo, Twitch, YouTube, and all that, that shit. Yeah, because they were going to get but their asses you sued. That, you, say, right, you look at that and you say, I'm an independent contractor. I'm my own boss. But here you got a company going, yeah, you're an independent contractor. You got to show up here. 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 Oh, well. I have Saturday and Sunday off. Can I go work over here at these shows? Nope, not allowed. You're exclusive to us. Yeah, because that's the okay. industry thing. Okay, and you know what I'll do? On the side, I'll do some video game streaming. Oh, hey, you know that video game streaming? Yeah, we're going to pay you $100,000 a year. Whatever you make off that video game streaming goes towards that guarantee $100,000. But that's the thing. That was wrong and illegal, and they were going to get their asses sued for that. So, like, you can't use that as an example because it is wrong. It is illegal, and they stopped that very quickly. They tried. I don't know if they have. They tried. I don't know if they have. The well, they could. was that they were going to be, and this came in after WrestleMania, but I've yet to see a single person who was on Twitch prior to the ban go back. Go to YouTube. Look at the Up, Up, Down, Down channel. What happened to Woods' Up, 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 up Down, Down stuff? He stopped doing live streams. His, the uploads are few and far between. He doesn't do the stuff he did anymore. Okay, yes. But Most that's, of the people that, dude, that has hired. to do, that has to do with sports entertainment. Uh, if I'm an independent contractor. No, but that has okay, to do news, with industry. News, that has to do news, with the industry. News this came out that Roderick Strong has requested his release multiple times. He was denied. I'm an independent contractor, but I can't quit the job that I have. But see, that's where you're not looking at the fine point. Here's the fine point. You're an independent contractor and you sign an exclusivity agreement to do what it is you do in, as an independent contractor exclusively for this company. Now, back in the day, we used to define that as wrestler. And I could say, I am, no, I am a wrestler that works for your wrestling company. I provide the service of wrestling. Now they're sports entertainers. So anything involved in entertainment falls under the exclusivity of the WWE. Because they fucking let themselves do that shit. They took away the word wrestler and allowed WWE to own the word superstar. So you're no longer, you are an independent. You are not independent. You are, no, you are. You are an independent contractor. Your contract means you are a superstar. You work for them. They get to define what a superstar is, so they define what you can and cannot do. Because people gave away their freedom. They did. Because they don't understand the freedom they have. I get, I get, I don't have any problems with it. I, I, I don't, 
I don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm not going to sit here and say WWE is an evil company. No, every single person who works there signed a contract. Yeah, they, they signed a that contract. To they should know that that this is the the this is the deal. It to me, it just isn't an independent. You know, like I mentioned in my my day job, I have there's people that work for the company I work for as contractors. But guess what? It's not exclusive. They work for multiple companies, actually, and, that, the and they're only contracted that while, well, yes, they could work up to 40 hours a week for the comp this company that I work for. If they don't, they can go work somewhere else. They could go work for this company doing the same type of job as a contractor. You know, I get the exclusivity part of it. It just, to me, that eliminates the independent. Because at that point, it, I'm not my own businessman. I'm not running my own business. It's my brand, but I got this person telling me where to go. I guess I just don't like the independent contractor. Well, but that's term. what happens. But it doesn't feel that way with WWE. We're like AEW. Hey, you can go work your GCW. See, the thing is, you can go work you your Defy you... and your other indies, New Japan, and all that. That's not because an issue. Because they're exclusive to AEW, it's pretty much they're exclusive by dates to AEW. But see, that's the you thing know, is and, that's not the issue with independent. That's not the issue is. What that you're talking about is what happens when we have a fucking monopoly. The problem is that WWE was a monopoly for the past 20 years. That's the problem. Because you see how they knock that shit off, dude. They not, And they are slowly but surely knocking off all of that shit. Because they've got to compete now. They can't monopolize. They can't say, blah, 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 fuck you. If you don't like it, you don't get to be a wrestler. And nowadays, it's like, no, well, fuck you. I do get to be a wrestler. And you know what? That company offers something different than you. And that's why WWE is now it's coming out. Oh, shit. WWE is on high alert because all this shit is coming out about how they actually tried to keep FTR and FTR told them to fuck off. Now, we all knew that that was what happened, but we didn't know how explicit it was. Like FTR said, no, dude, you cannot buy us. We don't want to work for your company. And WWE is starting to see the writing on the wall And that's why they're mellowing out on that shit Because you know what If you can get away with this bullshit Because you're a monopoly Then by all means do it It's capitalism Do what you can The thing is you can't do that shit no more They can't get away with that shit And they're slowly but surely pulling out people like Roderick Strong Yeah because Roderick Strong signed the contract Wait watch what happens when that contract is up Oh I'm sure they They're trying to fight They did the same thing to Brody Lee They did the same thing to Pat You know they asked for their releases, and instead they were sent home. Yes, they were paid every single week, and they were paid, I'm sure, pretty goddamn handsome. handsome. But they got paid to sit at home. Well, hey, I'm sure for some people that would be pretty cool, but for the, those guys, they wanted to go wrestle. The same thing with FCR. They requested their releases. They were denied for the longest time. I just find it kind of crummy where it's like, you're an independent contractor. you got to take care of all this shit on your own. But like for me, I'm not a. I could go quit my job and just post a two week notice, and they can't do a damn thing. And they're gonna let me walk. But you can't keep. That's again, your yes, con That's the contract contracts. that you signed. Totally you need to sign that personal I, responsibility. Or two, uh, and I did have an uh, at the previous com at a company. I had an exclusivity agreement, meaning I couldn't work anywhere else. But I was a contractor. However, they paid for my, they, they deducted taxes, they paid my health insurance. Well, it was actually for a hospital. Um, so uh, I guess it was all a wash. But I got all the benefits of a normal employee. Uh, and the only difference was if I quit while I was under contract, part of my contract was I will never be eligible for rehire for the company again. Um, they waived it even though I quit mid contract. Or, Actually, I signed a new, I had a two-year deal, uh, completed it, signed a new one, and then put in my two-week notice about three weeks after I signed a new deal. They they waived the whole blackballing part of it, uh, which was full of them, but, uh, you know, they let me go. I don't like it where they're going, you can't even quit me. We'd rather pay you to sit at home. To me, that to me that's a waste of money. You got a guy that doesn't even want to be here, you're going to pay him to go sit at home? Well, I mean, that's you just know, I don't bad find it business. business in my opinion. It's just uh, dirty but business. Yeah, but, like, that's the contract that they signed. They're shitty contracts. I get it. But, like, if you signed it, like, at what point do we tie, At what point do we stop having people responsible for their own actions? Like, no, at I what point? Like, yeah, it's a shitty contract. Like, it sucks that you signed it. But, like, at what point is it, like, no longer your fault anymore? You signed it. Absolutely. I agree with you. You know, and, like. It's just, it's just shitty. 
It is, is shitty, but now that there's competition, that's why I don't really watch or support WWE. I watch AEW because I like what they do. I like what they're bringing. WWE is bringing that just... The, it, they're, they're just way too corporate for me. I watched Raw this week, and I enjoyed it. Granted, it was the Hulu shortened version. Uh, I don't have cable, so I can't watch the three-hour version. Um, I didn't hate it. It, there was no commercials, so it zipped right on through, and it was nice. You know, I enjoyed the matches that I saw. I enjoyed the promo segments. And some of the, you know, the whole Elias and Ezekiel thing, is that a little hokey? Yeah, it can be. Uh, but that's WWE storytelling. You know, you get, but, but what I did see, a bunch of kids in the audience having a great time. Here's My experience doesn't mean that company is not putting out something that people don't enjoy. Well, no, but, yeah, but I, I, dude, I'm WWE listening. is McDonald's, man. Like, it's just soulless corporate drivel that's, like, out there to basically, My it takes time. My kids would rather time. have a Happy Meal than have me get some quality beef. Yeah, exactly. Kids would rather patty, have a Happy Meal. Ourselves. They would rather we take them to McDonald's to get the Happy Meal. Yeah, and yes, that's what I see right. WWE. It's just, you know, soulless, childish drivel for kids. Lowest common denominator crap, right? It's fucking, it's, it's in honest, sync. It's, you know, right it's Are America's Got right? Talent. It's just mainstream corporate brand drivel. And, like, that's fine. That works on the lowest common denominator for eight-year-olds with no level of intelligence. I don't think WWE insults the, uh, their audience's intelligence. People always say WWE insults my intelligence. I'm like, no, WWE caters to eight-year-olds, dude, and they don't insult eight-year-olds. They're actually pretty, it's actually pretty highbrow stuff for fucking toddlers, but it's just you're not a toddler, so it kind of insults your intelligence. And I don't even think it, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to insult your intelligence as an adult. It just, it all depends what you like. I don't like horror movies. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. It's just not my personal preference. Right. But, yeah, and like I said, I've tried watching WWE since Mania, and I've enjoyed what I've seen. I haven't watched everything. I haven't watched an episode of SmackDown. I've watched like three episodes of Raw, or however many it's been since Mania. I'm probably going to watch Backlash on Sunday. Uh, you know, my wife wants to see Cody, so we're, we're definitely going to watch it. Oh, um, yeah, Backlash is Sunday. I'll probably watch that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to check it out. Um, you know, and again, is it is it what I prefer? No. Did I still play on my phone during the show? Yeah. So it didn't keep my attention the whole time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, dude, people were having fun. Shit, when Asuka came back last week, we saw kids jumping up and down, like screaming they were having a great time that Asuka came back. And I found that to be fucking cool that Asuka is over with the children. I just find it cool that Asuka is over. But, I mean, you know what? We watch WWE here and there if we can, if we've got time. But we don't miss an episode of Dynamite in the house. I don't. You know? So, Rampage and Dynamite watch the video. That's the thing. If you're, like, I look at AEW as, like, artisanal wrestling. Like, I know that's very hipster like awful thing to say. But it's like, you know, like, WWE is Bud Light. And... AEW is like Stone Brewery. Like it's the more expensive shit made with a little bit more care. It's got a little bit more uh, substance to it, and that's that's where I fall in terms of my wrestling fandom. But go ahead. What are you saying? I think we should that should segue us into our final topic of the evening. I think we've beaten the the, the, the SAG and union stuff. Right, right. Moving along. <laughs> We gotta talk about the game real quick before we call it a day, because they did just put out some uh, a little live stream. There's a little bit of footage of like a couple of new wrestlers, but um. Yep. Uh, I want to so talk I, I, about. I watched. Go ahead. I didn't watch the live stream, but I did catch the clips that they put on YouTube of the character models for Chris Statlander and Nyla Rose. Uh, I'm gonna be on. Like, I'm excited to see how the game looks, but I'm gonna be honest, man. It looks a little rough, and I know it's we're not done yet. But if they were actually eyeballing like a September October release date, that looks a little rough for being five months out, four months out. Well, I'm hearing it, it through the grapevine as far as you know what I know from the gaming industry that. There, it's in developmental hell right now. And one of the problems is that AEW 
is kind of demanding a lot of stuff out of Ukes. And Ukes doesn't want to commit to... Like, AEW wanted this game to be their answer to the 2K franchise. But Ukes doesn't want to commit to a long-term developmental process without a long-term contract. But AEW doesn't want to give a long-term contract until they see what the first game is going to be. So right now, AEW is saying we want to add all of these features to make our game compete with 2K. And Ukes is saying, dude, that is going to take a long time. And in order for us to dedicate our studio to your game and your game alone, we need some long-term commitment out of you. And AEW is like, we're not going to sign a long-term contract like the WWE does with 2K till we see our first game. And that's where they're at right now. That's the impasse. Is 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 basically a Mexican standoff. You're we're that, that's that's what happens when you got you know like you mentioned WWE's the McDonald's. They've got the money. They've got the resources to sign those long term deals. AEW doesn't always have those. Doesn't have those. Same AEW has resources. those resources. They have more money than WWE. Tony Khan can fucking write a check and buy Vince McMahon five times over, but. They didn't get that well, money by being business, stupid. Like, yeah, like said, they didn't the get that way by being stupid. Multi millions of years and in, in, in years into this thing, and the thing flops. Exactly. Like I so, get their point of like, this is our first one, uh, and I even saw something from Kenny go uh, where he said, "Hey, 2K, we're not going to beat their their game. The way the, how polished everything is, the modes, the in depthness of the game, we're not going to be there for our initial release." I would probably compare their game. Do you remember the ECW games that came out on the Acclaim engine? Yeah. I feel AEW is going to be like that. It's going to be pretty shallow. It'll have some decent modes, but it's not going to be the 2K style. It's um, not going to have... I'm whole, expecting... Like said, only like 50 wrestlers are going to be on it. There's going to be a lot of omissions that people are going to be kind of shocked about. I think this um, game is going to be the No Mercy HD remix everybody's been dreaming of. And I think for better or worse, it's going to have, it's going to be No Mercy. And a lot of people are like, No Mercy is the greatest wrestling game of all time. And I'm like, yeah, dude, if you grew up in 2001, but like it has no online, you know, like it has, there's a lot of things that modern gaming has that No Mercy does not have. And I still go back and play No Mercy. It's fun, right. but it like. It's very fun for the nostalgia moment. Yeah, but I always end up going back to the current modern games. And I think that this AEW game is going to be a modern, upgraded version of what No Mercy was, and people are going to have their nostalgia glasses ripped off of their face when they get into it and say, "Oh man, this is not what I wanted." And it's like, "Wait a minute, you said you wanted a No Mercy remaster, just you know, with the licensing issues taken care of. This is it." There's no online. No Mercy didn't have online. There's no universe mode. No Mercy didn't have that. There's no story mode. You know, and those no are the shit. things. Yeah, but it wasn't like what we have with the My Rise in no. 2K. No. It was like, no, dude, nothing. I want the Intercontinental title. I'm going to fight five He's people, and then I'm going to fight gonna fucking winning. X-Pac, and then I get the Intercontinental He's title. Because He's X-Pac was the Intercontinental champion when the game released. Or whoever it was, Chris Jericho, whatever. Yeah. Right, whoever Eagle had, Brown. yeah, whoever was Intercontinental Eagle Champion when the game came out, that was the final boss in story mode to get the Intercontinental title, and then each title was just its own fucking story mode, right? That was yeah. no mercy. There was the tag team ladder, there was the, you know, the Intercontinental ladder, the European title, and that was it. You went through, you did a fucking, you did five matches, you fought the champ, and then maybe it was ten matches if you were going for the world title. Right, that was your story mode. That your versus mode was, hey, plug in a controller, right? Yeah. Plug in a controller, pick your match type, pick your wrestlers. Wow. You know, you can have four wrestlers in there. I imagine this game will be probably a more modernized and allow the six to eight wrestlers that modern wrestling games offer. Um, so I think that's going to be in there as opposed to you know No Mercy being stuck with four. I think they'll have more match types, but I think people need to. Temp it's like Kenny Omega said: temper your expectations because people are expecting a WWE 2K22 experience, and they're like, no, dude, we're just trying to make a game that was like No Mercy 20 years ago, and it's a that's a smaller game. It's not. You know, they're probably they may have a very shallow creator wrestler 
you know, like... Oh, they're saying that the creation mode should be pretty good. The creator wrestling mode should be pretty good. Uh, that's my hope. You know, I, I, I'm looking at this game a lot like Fire Pro Wrestling. Uh, and t and I, I didn't play anything before the first American one, which is like Fire Pro Wrestling Returns, which came out like 06, 07, something like that. Yeah. Um, when it came out in the U.S. But it was all, you know... They had this, they looked like, you know, the real wrestlers, the Kenta Kobashis, the, the Mitsuharu Misawas, but they were called something else, you know. Um, and to me, those games, while, while yes, you could have 5,000 created wrestlers because they were all little sprites, um, it was, to me, it was shallow in depth, you know. <laughs> it, uh, like this new one, Fire Pro Wrestling Returns, yeah, they got a couple story modes, but it's just all repetitive. There's no voice acting. There's, it's all, like, picture-based. You know, it's a Japanese game, so I wasn't kind of expecting too much. But, like, the, the, the main heavyweight title story mode for Fire Pro Wrestling World, it was long as fuck. And it was just the same thing over and over. Uh, and it was, like, it was just too repetitive, and I didn't really care for it. And I'll go and play Fire Pro every now and again still. I'll download some cause and and I'll, uh, and I'll play it. And it's cool that you can put in your own music. Now you can upload your own graphics and you can do all this cool shit. But it's still limited. I still want to do a My Rise, a Universe, a GM. And uh, I, they did add a GM into Fire Pro. It's super convoluted. I, I never figured it out. Uh, but there's a lot of people that love it. And that's what they do. They, there's a lot of people that just play Fire Pro to watch the matches. That's what I do with 2K. I just put my 2K up and I just play. I watch my universe. My universe mode has some banging fucking matches right now. Right. I just think that that this game is built to be a multiplayer game. It's built to be like No Mercy, a game you play on the couch with your friends. It's a local multiplayer. It's not built to be a story. It's not built to be an online eSport. I don't even think they're going to do that. It's built to be like a Nintendo Switch game. I think that if people look at it as like a Nintendo Switch game like Mario or Smash Brothers or Mario Kart, that's what they're looking to build, the Mario Kart of wrestling. And because that's what No Mercy was. And that's I'm what I think that. that they're building, and I think that's why Kenny is saying temper your expectations because people are expecting the AEW answer to 2K22. And really, this is an Xbox Live Arcade game. This is like a small indie, independent game. Well, and, and, and no offense, it's only they've only been in development for like two years. 2K took, what, 18 months in between 2K20 and 2K22. Uh, well, With October a pre-built engine, right? They to March of 22, yeah. Oh, actually, almost two years. Um, about two, about a, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, yes, like you said, pre-built engine. It, they, they already had a lot of the base. They just needed to do the graphics. They needed to fix the bugs. They needed to fix those things. Because yeah, 2K I mean, is just is the same game. Scratch. Honestly, I, I. If they really wanted a 2K uh, competitor, this would be probably a five-year development. And we're coming up on, like, two, and they're already saying it's about to come up. Hey, I, maybe the deal. I hope the DLC uh, structure is going to be is, is going to be good. They are talking about that, but nothing confirmed. Um, I guess he's I would be cool with that. Here. Cool with he's a couch fighter. I hope winning. there's some online so I could beat your ass on this game, too. Right. Um, I just want an old school. I'm with you, dude. I just want an old school couch like wrestling game. Like, like I had fighter. so much fun. No, not like Street Fighter. Like No Mercy. Like I had so much fun sitting on the couch with four people playing No Mercy, getting drunk. Or well, it wasn't No Mercy, right? I I played uh, WrestleMania. You were in high school with that one. We were just sitting on the couch playing. <laughs> we were playing. I remember our game was WCW Revenge, and that was one of the reasons why I said the Nintendo 64 is the greatest console of all time. Because in that console, I could get three buddies, and we would have Mario Kart, Smash Brothers, GoldenEye, WCW Revenge. Those four games, and that was that was an evening. You could have so much fun with three buddies. Four controllers and those games on Nintendo 64, and you were having the night of your life. And we have a modern Mario Kart. We have first-person shooters out the ass, right? We have fighting games, Smash Brothers. We have a modern Smash Brothers. 
We don't have a modern WCW revenge. It has nothing to do with the IP or the the license of it being an AEW game. I want this, yeah, the style. I just want that game that I want to sit there and do heavy grapples to charge up my fucking special move and then hold the heavy grapple down and I raise my arms up to let them know that I'm doing a heavy grapple. I want to fucking push a button to springboard off of the ropes if they're outside. Like, I just want to do no mercy shit, man. That's what I want. I want a game that lets me do that with three buddies. You know, I'll buy it on the Switch or the PlayStation or whatever. I'll get some extra controllers, have the homies come over. And if the game, if that game is fun to play with like my wife and my neighbors, then I'll know they did it right. Because WCW Revenge and by proxy, No Mercy, was a fun game even if you didn't like wrestling. And, you, and it was so easy to figure out. You, you could pick I up the sticks and just play right out. Yeah, of you game. need a fucking, you need a fucking PhD like to play 2K. Dude, go try playing Fire Pro Wrestling. Holy shit, you think you need a PhD there? You need like three PhDs to play that one. It right. is, it, it's insane. If they can do I, I, that, if they can pull that off, I think yeah. if they if they can just give us no mercy with good what graphics, modern graphics, which it are the game already looks fine to me, right? It looks a little cartoony, but so does Overwatch. Um, I'm okay with cartoony. Yeah. It just felt a little bit of the things where, where and I, again, it's a, it's it's not the final build. There was just a couple of clips where they were showing the moves getting done where the person wasn't selling. Uh, you know, and I'm like, okay, I hope, I'm sure that's going to get fixed. It just looked a little clunky, and I just hope that they work all that out before the game. I trust. I'm willing to bet they will. I'm willing to bet they will because Kenny Omega wants a good game. That's what you know, I was going to say is I trust him. November, I think that's given him the time where this could be in the forefront of his mind instead of having to worry about defending, you know, his titles in TV and all of that shit. See, that's what I'm saying is I trust that this is going to be good. I, I don't think that it's going to be this huge life-changing, like, wrestling game that changes the game, but I think it's going to at least be good because Kenny Omega, he's not just a wrestling fan. Dude, he named his fucking finishing move Wandering Angel. Like, he's a gamer. This matters to him. This matters to him probably more than it matters to anyone else. Like, he needs Kenny Omega needs this game to be good more than he needs this game to be successful because this isn't just a business opportunity for him as an EVP like this is a lifelong passion to like play a video game you know to play a modern no mercy because he's wanted to play that game he's had so much hands on he's been so hands on yeah so I trust this man I trust that this game is going to be at least at least as good as No Mercy with HD graphics, I think the younger generation probably will find that a little archaic. But me, like, I want that so bad. Like, I just want There's to sit there to and do. Said about the arcade, like, I, you know, it's, I, I want, to me, what I'm, what I think this is gonna be like is, you got your WWE games. That's your Madden. You're gonna have this one. That's your NFL Blitz. And that's what I'm hoping, right? I'm yep. hoping that. Because, dude, you could make AEW in the 2K games. They just download yeah. some skins and make a created Chris Jericho, and you're good to go. Right? If I why, wanted... Why do you need an AEW game anymore if you could just get everybody? And now you can even put their actual pictures in there. Yeah. The only thing like, you don't have is the actual music and, some and their names sometimes. I mean, you but, can get a, you could buy 2K19 on PC because they haven't removed mods from that. And you can basically do all that shit anyways. I want a game that plays different from 2K. That's nothing like 2K. I see AEW. This game will be on PC. Yeah. And it's going to have mod support, which I think is a big, uh, that's something being thrown at 2K because they just removed mod support. Yeah, I saw something with the latest uh, 1.10 update that, that kind of fucked over the modding community and uh, I hope they go back on it. I know GTA did that at one point and then they ended up changing it and going back because of the backlash. I hope 2K learns the modding community is good. You, you want them to mod your game. Yeah, honestly, like if they if they don't bring back modding into the 2K games, I don't know that I'll ever buy them on PC. Like the only reason to buy them on PC is for the modding. And Absolutely. like if I just want to play a fucking game where I play as fucking Roman Reigns and I power bomb fucking Seth Rollins through tables, I can do that on my PlayStation. But if you allow me to mod 
I can double dip. Now there's a reason to buy that game on another platform because it offers something I don't get elsewhere. And so I just think that 2K is going to be shooting themselves in the foot because they're going to spend all this money on a PC port of the game. And their PC port of this game is fine. So they spent the money to make sure it was good, but now nobody's going to buy it. Because why would I buy this shit when I can buy the exact same game on PS4? Everybody fucking has a PS4 or an Xbox One. The only people who can't get this game are people that only have a Switch. So, like, why would I buy this game on Steam over, you know, console when it offers nothing extra? And I'm not going to double dip. It's actually funny, um, you know, I'm in the IT industry. There are so many people that I've worked with. They are PC only. No console. They don't even own. They're like, oh, the last console I owned was like an Xbox 360. And I'm talking like they're telling me this like last year. Yeah. Most people you know, that are serious about gaming are PC gamers. They're PC gamers like, only. That's console gamers right. are like moms and dads buying consoles for their kids or like people that aren't serious. Like they buy three games. Like they buy Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, and Madden every year. Right? Like oh, that's, shit, that's console. Um, like hardcore gamers are all on PC. And like you yeah. know if someone is a super hard. To me, casual gamers are PC gamers. You're a, you're a gamer if you're on PC and you're casual about it. Hardcore gamer is someone who has PC and console, right? Oh, like, I would I, agree with that. I play so many video games that I have a PC and a console, but like I don't consider console gamers to really be gamers now. I look at video game consoles like I a fucking VCR. A peasant it, yeah, it's like a VCR. <laughs> That's like somebody who owns a Blu-ray player saying that they're a movie fan. It's like, no, right. dude, everybody has a Blu-ray player. That doesn't make you a movie fan, right? A movie fan is someone that goes to Sundance, you know? That's a movie fan. You know, and so, like, to me, a PC is just bare minimum to be able to play games. <laughs> you know, like, you're, you own me, a PC, I, you're just a bare minimum gamer. I consider myself the casual gamer. I don't play on PC. Hell, See, I, I wouldn't consider a you a gamer at all. See, I consider myself casual because, I yeah, do I play the Call of Duties, the FPS games, the Grand Theft Autos, the Madden? Yeah. I do every year, not every year, but most years, some years. Well, not the Madden games. I probably pick those up like once every five years. Uh, but you know the wrestling games. See, that's I what I'm saying is I wouldn't consider you like, a game. Even things like Elden Ring, those games, like I want to play Elden Ring because it looks cool as shit. But I'm probably gonna spend seventy bucks and be like bored in an hour because right. i don't play those types of games i know but i never did i never did it wasn't like i fell out of love with those games dude you can go, if you went and looked at my nintendo 64 game collection it was all wrestling right <laughs> i don't think i had a single game for n64 that wasn't wrestling pretty I'm much thinking about it now yeah i'm pretty sure i had everything i had the no mercies the mania 2000s revenge the ecw games yeah Right, and now we can add AEW to it. I'm super excited as a gamer and yeah. a wrestling fan. You're more of a wrestling fan than a gamer. I'm more of a I'm gamer a than a wrestling fan. Games. That's right, and I'm a gamer <laughs> who watches wrestling once a week, right? So I just I feel like as long as everybody keeps their uh, expectations relatively uh, understandable, you know, within moderation, I think this game is going to deliver an experience that we can have fun sitting on the couch, getting stoned, playing wrestling <laughs> and that's all i want from this i want a game i Dude, can get stoned and have fun playing with my family i just want to fucking hang out play the game yep i just want to sit on the couch and play it whether i i hope they have an online mode um so you could i, I don't need to do tournaments like even with 2k i don't do the tournaments i don't give a shit about that i just want to get on there and have fun wrestling matches and that's it and if if that's how it is awesome I am all in. I hope that's the I, I hope that's the type of game we're getting. And if we get more than that, dude, it exceed that would be ex exceeding my expectations. Right. Well, with that, we are out of time. I want to thank y'all for stopping by and enjoying the show. Make sure you're following us. Uh, links should be in the description for all of our uh, twitters and all of that. But if you're a new yes. listener and you've made it all the way to the end of this uh, podcast. Shoot us a like and a comment and uh, and subscribe and all of that. Because, like, shit, the algorithm already thinks you subscribed if you watch it the very, till the very end anyways. Sweet. 
I, yeah, man. Hey, this was fun. I, I like the different topics. I uh, got a little in depth there for a bit, which I, I actually enjoyed. But yeah, man, this was a good one. Uh, yeah, everyone, take a, hopefully uh, you stick around. Come to, come back for next week's episode and hear us bitch at each other some more. Right. <laughs> All right. But this has been a good one, man. Right on. Later. All right, man. Hey, like, comment, subscribe at Ryan Stone SD.